So emerging evidence suggests that hormonal birth control actually might be weakening society, creating issues that are linked with fertility and linked with poor health outcomes and offspring of people who used hormonal birth control agents. I know this might sound a little bit controversial. I want to dive into the literature on this, talk about the health problems linked with birth control, how to get off birth control, and what to realistically expect, like how long your body might renormalize after you get off birth control if you've been on it for quite some time. Because there's a litany of health problems linked with birth control, including increased risk for having a heart attack, having a stroke, probably hormonal-related cancers like breast cancer and endometrial issues and much more. So let's dive into it and talk about the science that I think a lot of people have been on the fringes sort of talking about, but we now have really good evidence to suggest that there are significant health ramifications, not only on the individual, but on society. If, if many people are on the pill, then they get off the pill to have kids that might actually be creating children that are more susceptible to having health issues because when women are on the pill, it mimics the hormonal milieu that is linked with pregnancy. And as such, when women are pregnant, they're more attracted to mates that are safer and that, that are actually genetically similar from an MHC. This is the major histocompatibility complex. That's the most complex word we're gonna talk about today. It's important that you understand this because literally women that are on the pill preferentially mate with men who are more genetically similar, which actually reduces fertility and increases the odds and lower survivability of the offspring. This is important. Just think of incest. Why do people who have babies with their cousins have, why do those children have health issues? Because the genetic similarity is so close. And so women who are off the pill and cycling normal are preferentially more attracted to men who have MHC dissimilar genes. And so that's the pheromones that you're attracted to, the facial shape that you find attractive in another, you know, in a partner, and also the secondary sex characteristics that is related to the MHC compatibility. And again, normal cycling women compared to women who are on the pill, there's a major difference in the MHC compatibility and preferences. And so Again, I think this is important to recognize and acknowledge, especially considering that fertility issues are at an all-time low here in what the Western world, particularly Canada and the US, and also marriage issues are really high. More than 50% of marriages end up failing. Why is that? Is that because so many people are using the pill and then they get off the pill and get married and have kids and so forth and they realize that, wow, I don't find my spouse attractive anymore when I'm off birth control. I am not attracted to the scents and the smells and the, the things that make that person them. I'm no longer finding that attractive. So the paper that we're going to talk about here that was published in 2009 that's been referenced numerous times and I think is generating a lot of buzz around this topic is titled, Does the Contraceptive Pill Alter Mate Choice in Humans? And you can see here there's a man same man, but they did some graphical alterations here to make his face look a little bit more effeminate. And then the man on the right has a more prominent jawline, looks more masculine. Well, it turns out that there was a difference in these subjects that were on hormonal birth control versus those that were cycling naturally in terms of the, the mating preference. And you can see here, more non-pill users were interested in the male that looked a little bit more masculine. And so that's, I think, what is a little bit interesting here is because when we talk about the physiology of what is going on when women take hormonal birth control, we're going to talk shortly about the changes in progesterone, changes in estrogen, changes in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. I'm not going to get into really details, a lot of details on this. I'm going to share with you images so you understand this and how to detoxify these progestins in just a moment, but just want to welcome you all back. Thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing the video. Thanks for hitting the like button. If you find this information helpful, if you know young women or women of reproductive age that are on hormonal birth control, please share this video with them because they need to know that this is changing their risk and risk profiles for diseases like cardiovascular disease, stroke, and even having blood clots and also changing their preferences when it comes to choosing a mate, the really important stuff. So one of the things that I advise all my clients to consider is detoxification. Not only are we getting synthetic compounds in you know, say like hormonal birth control agents, but our furniture, our cosmetics, even our clothing, our food and food packaging contains persistent organic chemicals and hormonal altering chemicals. So it's important to consider detoxification of these compounds. I'm a huge fan of taking N-acetylcysteine, also known as NAC or NAC, and glycine for that very reason, because those two compounds are part of the glutathione tripeptide. When you take them, you can increase healthy levels of glutathione. 
It's best to take these before bed because glycine has been shown to improve GABA synthesis, which may help support relaxation and feelings of calm. And also detoxification happens and elimination of compounds while you're sleeping during the nighttime phase of your circadian rhythm. So you can support your body's elimination pathways and support the healthy antioxidant response by going over to myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, myoscience with an X, and save on the new NAC Glycine Supreme. It also has taurine. It's in a powder, really affordable, and it's even more affordable if you use the code PODCAST at checkout. That's PODCAST at myoscience on the new NAC Glycine Supreme. Okay, so let's further dive into this. What does the pill do? I think it's important to recognize that the pill is changing the hormonal milieu in the female body, it's suppressing ovulation, and it's mimicking the hormonal environment that is normally associated with pregnancy. If you think about progestation, that's where the hormone progesterone is derived from. So essentially what many hormonal commercial birth control pills are is a synthetic progesterone. It's a progestin compound. So that is mirroring the hormonal milieu that's linked with pregnancy. And so again, pregnant women are attracted to a different type of male compared to non-pregnant women. And that might be why when women get off the pill, they might not find their spouse, the, the pheromones, the hormones, the facial structure and all that as attractive. So important when it comes to if you're single and you're choosing a, a partner, make sure that you date when you're not on the pill, okay? Uh, really important stuff. But what you can see here, we're gonna focus on the blue and the red, okay? These are the changes in the estrogen and the progesterone levels in figure A of a normal cycling woman. You see natural ebbs and flows in progesterone and estrogen throughout the month. Now here's what you see in a woman in figure B who's on hormonal birth control. You see really flat levels of progesterone and estrogen is tanked. It's on the bottom, right? And so the important thing to recognize is this is a synthetic progestin that and we know from the Women's Health Initiative and the N. Haynes data that progestin use, that is a synthetic progesterone, has health ramifications when it comes to clotting, cardiovascular disease, and, and stroke incidents. Okay? Now, what we also want to focus here is the green and yellow lines in both figure A and figure B. These are lines representing follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The big green line there is luteinizing hormone. Lute luteinizing hormone has all sorts of off-target effects that are that are considered beneficial for the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. What do you see with luteinizing hormone? It's chronically suppressed in individuals who are on hormonal contraceptives. It's suppressed, my friends. So you need to understand this because when you try to get off hormonal birth control, it's going to be a 90-day period where you may not feel like yourself. It's going to take a, a little bit of time to renormalize the HPA axis. You're going to have to be kind to yourself. You're going to have to still exercise, focus on sleep, but you might be a little bit moody, you know, because the progesterone that you've been used to having might be off. So it could be helpful to maybe consider taking a little progesterone on day 14 or day 10 of your cycle to sort of mirror or mimic what would normally happen if you were cycling to help get that on track. A lot of women that I work with who are uh, doctors and so forth, They'll prescribe oral progesterone at night because oral progesterone gets converted to allopregnenolone that actually helps with sleep. And so you just need to recognize this. And so we do see this uh, hypothalamic pituitary suppression also in men who do anabolic steroids and who do hormone replacement therapy. So in those men, it takes a good 12 weeks to like renormalize after they use those agents, okay? It's important to understand that the progestin component of hormonal birth control provides ovulation suppression by suppressing luteinizing hormone at the level of the pituitary. And the oftentimes these oral contraceptives also have estrogen, which suppresses the FSH release from the pituitary to prevent formation of a new dominant follicle. So that's how this stuff works. Here's some Challenges linked with hormonal birth control, changes and increased risk of having a thrombotic stroke and myocardial infarction, which is a way to talk about a heart attack. This was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. There was also a study that found that oral contraceptive agents increase the risk for stroke. This was just published June of this year. So we have epidemiological data showing that people who use hormonal birth control, not only do they have altered mating preferences, but they have higher incidences of these fatal events like having a stroke or a heart attack. And so this is not a good thing because we know those diseases are on the rise, those conditions. Even more so, this was a study published in, in September of this year. The title here is Regulatory T-Cell Proportion and Phenotype Are Altered in Women Using Oral Contraception. 
really important to just quickly talk about the regulatory T cells. And we know that there's a disproportionate increase in autoimmunity and allergies and food sensitivities in women compared to men. Well, why is that? Why is it, is it all related to estrogen? Well, could it be related to prior use of hormonal birth control? Well, the data is starting to accumulate that perhaps that could be the case because regulatory T cells are suppressed in women who are on hormonal birth control because what these T cells are intended to do is they actually prevent the mother's immune system from attacking the fetus and prolong sort of suppression of ovulation and the changes of chronically, you know, ramming in synthetic progestins might just weaken the, the response of these T reg cells. And so these women might be hyper reactive from an immunologic standpoint and therefore more susceptible to environmental aller allergies food allergies, and their own self-antigens, which might be why we see thyroid issues in women much more commonly than in men. We see multiple sclerosis, lupus, scleroderma, eczema, rosacea. There's a lot of issues that both men and women are facing, but on the immune side, more so common in women. And could this be linked with use of hormonal birth control? Well, there's new evidence to, to highlight a, a potential mechanism here and that is augmenting and, and negatively impacting these critically important T regulatory cells. And we've talked about the T reg cells as they're linked with leptin before. Leptin suppresses T reg cells. This is why obese and overweight people have higher prevalences of asthma, allergies, and, and autoimmunity and inflammation because these T reg cells help to normalize the inflammatory tone and prevent autoimmunity and chronic inflammation. So that's really important. So let's finish off with mating preference. Uh, this to me is the most exciting aspect of, you know, and it's crazy as well. The fact that it, taking exogenous hormones changes females' uh, propensity towards what men they find uh, they're, they're attracted to. So it turns out that the use of oral contraceptive pills increased and smoothens out levels of estrogen and progesterone by mimicking the hormonal state of pregnancy. These are verbatim words from this paper that I mentioned titled, Does the Contraceptive Pill Alter Mate Choice in Humans? And they say, new evidence suggests that the pill, by eliminating oestrus, changes the natural cycling preferences in women for markers of both genetic quality and compatibility in mates. This has to do with that major histocompatibility complex that I mentioned. Now, remember, your cousin is MHC more similar compared to someone on the other side of the globe, which is why if you have intercourse with your cousin, the chances that that child will have health issues is very high. So MHC dissimilarity is linked with increased health in the offspring. That's an important point. Now, here's what's crazy. Women on the pill, for whatever reason, are more attracted to genetically similar individuals. And so that might lead to and might be one reason why we're seeing such high levels of infertility and health problems in children now. Some of the kids are, are just not as resilient as they used to be. Some of the children now, and, and we see the data, there's a much higher incidence of gender dysphoria and gender confusion and identification with non-binary genders and all these things in kids. Well, we can blame TikTok and social media and all these things for that. But what if it was had to do with um, the fact that in generations of women who are now having children were on hormonal birth control for a long time and that could have altered the mates that they're attracted to and created genetically or a phenotype that has a higher uh, issues associated with gender dysphoria. You know, this is these are just things that scientists are sort of talking about. For example, as compared with normally cycling women, pill users show no or weaker preferences for facial and vocal masculinity. And I shared with you those pictures before of the the same male. They altered it graphically to make the male look a little bit a little bit more feminine. Pill users preferentially liked that facial structure compared to the more masculinized picture, which is quite interesting. They say, for instance, the preferred face shape is more masculine during the high conception probability phase of the menstrual cycle in non-pill users, but pill users do not show similar preferences. So when women are starting to ovulate, they're even more attracted to masculine futures in men and their, their libido is higher during this period as well. But you know, during that same time course in the cycle, pill users don't show that increased preference for the masculine like features like facial structure, facial shape, and also facial hair and vo uh, the vocal tone, deep voice. 
And so the scientists want to say similarly, as compared with non-pill users, pill users express neither the preferences or sense of symmetry, hypothesized to be an honest signal of phenotype and genetic quality in human males. So that MHC compatibility is linked with your pheromones, your smell, and other futures. The scientists say, furthermore, whereas normally cycling women express a preference for MHC dissimilarity in mates, pill users prefer odors of MHC similar men, indicating that pill use might eliminate adaptive preferences for genetic similarity. So that's an important point I think we need to recognize. If you're a woman who's on hormonal birth control and you've been in a long-term relationship with a man and you're considering having children with that man, I think it behooves both of you to maybe you go off the pill for a good four or five months and see, and be honest with yourself, see if you're still attracted to that man, his sense, his smells, his face, his voice, his facial hair or lack thereof. Are you still attracted to that? Because if you're not, you're going to have problems down the road from a marital relationship standpoint and co-parenting. If you get off the pill, get pregnant and you no longer find him attractive. This is, this is really Honestly, it's not just like pie in the sky science that is interesting. This is like practical stuff that we should be sharing with people is recognizing that this is real. The scientists say these results suggest that the use of the pill is related to women favoring less symmetrical masculine and MHC dissimilar men, a preference attributed to pill use induced changes in hormonal levels simulating pregnancy. Again, because the pill is based upon synthetic progestins, the body thinks it's pregnant, so it's choosing to be with a partner that's more safe, that may not have this MHC dissimilarity and may not be a hyper-masculine phenotype. So this is, I think, important stuff, guys and gals. And here's an image right here, table one. Take a screenshot of this, share this with friends. This shows the various studies that have been conducted on this. This has been reported in the journal Science and in NPR. I mean, other media outlets have been talking about this. And I think it's something that as a collective, we should be talking about. We should be sharing because unfortunately, there's a high prevalence of women that are of reproductive age that are on hormonal birth control that are considering having kids that are getting married. And we want to prevent issues with regards to divorce and marital discord and make sure that the health of the babies uh, is top of mind for a lot of people. And so it's important for, for us to consider this. So Hopefully you found this information helpful. I'll put links in the show notes to all the studies that we talked about. There's at least four that are worth downloading, worth bookmarking, knowing where they are so you can reference them down the road. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button. Thank you for sharing this video with someone who is considering getting on the pill or is on the pill or having children um, and, and getting off of it. Um, they should know this information. And thanks for leaving a comment and we'll catch you in a future one down the road.